Fill up your pickle jars, fellas. Let's shave. My 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 papa uma mama papa uma mama. My favorite part about wet shaving is. Ah, yeah, it's uh, Greg Tardiff. Thank you for watching a video, even though we're just getting started. It means a lot to me that you clicked on this video. My favorite part about wet shaving is with everything available to us, we can cater our shaves specifically to what we like best. That's cool, right? There's nothing out there that you can really do that with, except for like cooking. You can pick the razor that you wanna use, you can pick the lather bowl that you want to use if you want to even use a lather bowl. Some people just lather on their hands or lather on their face. You can pick the specific razor blades for your razor. You can pick your favorite soap base and just have the perfect shave every day. You can pick your favorite splashes, but you can you can cater your shave to what works best for you. And I didn't really think about that with brushes. I just was like, this is a shave brush. I'm gonna lather up. Don't make fun of me. This was my first shave brush. I got this like, I don't know, eight, 10 years ago. It's badger hair, but I think it came off of one of their really sad badgers. <laughs> if I had to be upfront about it, it's losing its hair. It's lost a lot of hair in the past eight, 10 years, just like me. I think it was under $10. I started then into my first synthetic was this Rockwell shave brush. Uh, this one's very nice. It's very small, but it's very comfortable. There's some considerable backbone that I wasn't expecting from it coming off of that Sad Badger. That was my nickname in high school. Sad Badger Greg. Just kidding. Uh, but this, this is actually really, really nice and provides a really decent lathering experience, face experience. This one is the one that I use for travel because it's small uh, and efficient and it works every time. And it being synthetic means you don't get like animal stink and you don't have to baby it. Like the boar hair one that I have, I like it for the exfoliating features on it. The rigidity, the hardness of these hair blades. Uh, but you do kind of have to like baby the animal hair ones, which if you've ever seen anything that I've owned that's not been on this channel, I'm not the best at taking care of my stuff. Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements makes really, really good mass-produced brushes. Their handles, uh, like this one, the Atomic Rocket. Uh, this one is a recent one, very soft. When you splay it out on your face, there's not much resistance, and you can see it covers about, if my head was the earth, Argentina basically covers no that's even bigger that's like Russia maybe yeah USSR right on my face but my first PAA brush was the uh, green ray and the green ray is very nice very fine hairs synthetic as well and very comfortable not much stiffness to it kind of a high loft I guess is what they call that this is the loft from the the base to the top what I'm picking up here is like there's different features that these these brushes all have. I really like this one, the Atomic Rocket. And when I got the Green Ray, I, I was like, holy crap, it's so much bigger than my Rockwell brush. So I was like, I, I don't know if I can handle something that big. And then I got the Atomic Rocket and that's even bigger still. The thing that prompted this video was that I just got my first artisan handcrafted brushes. And it's from Teton Shaves. The, the Phoenix brushes, usually about $20. And the Teton Shaves brushes range anywhere from $50 to probably upwards of a million, depending on what you get in there. Because he pours his handles, got a cool chip in it, which is really cool. And these are synthetic brushes. Uh, this is from his Zen collection. You can see it's got some, some rocks in it to kind of give that tranquility. 
Also reminds me a little bit of maybe the Green Goblin if you're a Spider-Man person. This is his signature knot in here. It's 26 millimeters. Not super tall, but um, domed and gives some really good pushback. Some stiffness right there. I think that's kind of cool. I like that. And when I'm lathering with it, especially if I do a bowl lather, I feel like I don't have to like ease up on it. I can kind of dig it in. Good lather going on there. And then the second one is called the Remnant. This is a Remnant. And this is a experimental knot he was telling me. And this one is a little bit shorter than the Teton Shave, the Zen one with the rocks. But it, it's, it's heavy. They're both pretty heavy. This one's heavy because I'm assuming it has rocks in it. This one, I don't see any rocks in it. There might be one, maybe six. It's dense, which is nice, and it's small, which is kind of cool too. And there's really good rigidity there, which is good because I don't feel like I need to cover Russia size area of my face. I've been really happy with these brushes so far. I've had them for about four days at this point. I'm not a big brush snob or anything like that, but I can definitely tell a difference from this one, my original to this one, the Rockwell, and from this one up to these, okay? Because, that you know, the Rockwell and the Phoenix brushes, the Phoenix brushes are really good and the Rockwell brush is really good. There's just, it just feels more solid in the hand, a lot different. And there's not one that's good or bad, except for maybe this one, this one might be bad, but the, it's all about your preference. My preferences change all the time because I keep trying new stuff and I'm like, hey, I like this. Or hey, I like this brush with this soap. Or I like this brush with this soap. So having these options available to us, I think is very important. I think it's, I'm talking really high because I think it's really important. I think it's really important. There, that's my deep voice. Fill up your pickle jars, fellas. Let's shave. Brushes are cool. Do you have a favorite brush? Uh, I'm just, as I mentioned, diving in just a little bit with these, uh, artisan handcrafted brushes at a at a Idaho. I have never had one of these. So I think we should probably try that right now. Oh, looks like maybe some coconut. Scent test, some chocolate. Is it a potato in there? I didn't even look it up. Huh. I'm not a coconut guy. Well I'm gonna eat it all. Not for me. I don't need any but for you. I was uncomfortable in my mouth. That's what she said. Oh, thanks for watching. That was weird.